Birds come in an absolute kaleidoscope of colors. That's one reason bird watching has an edge on, say, squirrel watching. But have you ever wondered how they pull off such a stunning spectrum? Where does that kaleidoscope actually come from? In fact, it takes a combination of four sources, and today we're going to take a tour through all of them. Three of those four are pigments, and the first is melanin. It's found in just about every animal. It's what darkens our skin when we get a tan, for example. It's produced by melanogenesis in specialized cells called melanocytes. Melanin is a multi-purpose protein, but as a pigment, it's responsible for darker colors like black or earth tones. You can see it in crows, sparrows, hawks, and the non-red parts of a red-winged blackbird. The second kind of pigments are the carotenoid family. Carotenoids are warm-toned pigments and give us the brilliant crimson of the northern cardinal and the striking yellow of an American goldfinch or yellow warbler. But what's crazy is none of those birds can produce carotenoid pigments. They can only get them from what they eat, often plants where they're essential for photosynthesis. Once the bird eats them, the carotenoids circulate through their bloodstream to the feather follicles where they express as colors. And if you see, for example, a robin with a faded, rusty breast, it may be a sign that they're not getting enough carotenoids in their diet. The third type of pigments are the porphyrins, made by modifying amino acids in the liver and other tissues. They can produce a range of colors, red, pink, green, and brown. Porphyrins are also what make plants green and our blood red. It's rare for them to be used as coloration in mammals, but some groups of birds, like owls and pigeons, use porphyrins as pigments. And the coolest thing about them might be what we don't see. When you expose them to UV light, something amazing happens. They glow with an intense red. Birds, unlike us, can see into the UV spectrum, so as gorgeous as they look to us, birds with porphyrin-based coloration may look even more alluring to each other. Those are our three pigment types, melanin, carotenoids, and porphyrins. But there's one more pretty amazing way birds get their colors. It's called structural coloration. Pigments produce color by absorbing all but certain wavelengths of light. Structural coloration scatters the light. As it hits a bird's feathers, it encounters a complex lattice of keratin and air vacuoles that refract and reflect it. One form of structural coloration results in constructive interference that reinforces the shortest wavelengths, those in the blue range. That's how we get the brilliant colors of a blue jay or a mountain bluebird, incidentally by the same principle that makes the sky blue. But some birds have an even more complex structure at play that reflects different wavelengths at different angles. That produces iridescence, the multicolor metallic shine found in magpies, pigeons, grackles, and others. Structural coloration can also reinforce wavelengths in the UV spectrum. There are many species of birds in which males and females can look identical to us, but they have different patches of UV reflecting feathers, letting them easily identify amongst themselves. Together, these four sources give us the enormous spectrum of bird plumage. And some of them do much more than just provide striking color. This video has been all about how birds look as impressive as they do, and next time we'll delve into why they look the way they do in some pretty unexpected ways.